I'm Tanya Weicker and I'm a physical therapist. I practice holistic physical therapy and in particular myofascial release. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about myofascial release and um, what, a, what a beautiful treatment it is and how much it can help. So in particular I'm talking about John F. Barnes method of myofascial release and I'll explain a little bit what that distinguisher is. So easiest always as I do with every patient and client in order to understand myofascial release and it's um, it, to better understand it. It's easiest to have a pretty solid grasp of what fascia is overall. So I'm just going to spend a couple minutes explaining fascia and the fascial system and then we'll actually show you a technique and while I'm doing the myofascial release technique I'll keep talking a little bit about what's going on. Fascia itself is a densely woven tough connective tissue that surrounds and attaches to and infuses every muscle, bone, nerve, artery, vein, and internal organ in our body. Actually, even interpenetrating into our heart, our lungs, our brain, and our spinal cord. Fascia is one continuous system. So basically, inside of us, fascia is a three-dimensional web that runs uninterrupted from head to toe. Fascia in its healthy state is fluid, wavy, it's relaxed in its configuration, it's very pliable. When we experience physical trauma, injury, surgery, inflammation, stress, disease, scarring, the fascia actually starts to lose its pliability and it becomes tight and restricted and, and it hardens in and causes fascial restrictions. So what happens is because it's one continuous structure, a fascial restriction in one region leads to fascial restrictions in multiple regions. So the easiest way to think of it, we often, in teaching patients and clients what's happening and what's, what's happening system-wide in their whole fascial system, is if you picture a snag in the yarn of a sweater. How if you get a snag and it starts to pull the whole way through the structure. So what happens is, in that region of fascial restriction, it tugs on the whole fascial system and it creates a drag in a lot of different areas which leads to multiple fascial restrictions. So one restriction tightens in and leads to multiple restrictions. A lot of times we speak about it actually as sort of like an internal straitjacket. The whole body tightens up and it tugs. What research has actually shown is that that tug is up to, can exert, the fascial restriction can exert up to 2,000 pounds of pressure per square inch in our body, which is an enormous load inside of our body and an enormous tug. If you think back to all of the things that I said fascia surrounds and it's intertwined in all of our vessels and organs and muscles and bones and nerves. So that tug um, is pulling on pain sensitive structures and creates significant pain and discomfort. The really tough thing is that the medical community right now, the traditional medical tests often used to diagnose to diagnose us when we have pain and when we have tough symptoms, such as x-ray, CAT scans, myelograms, uh, EMGs, those medical tests don't show fascial restrictions. So many of us are walking around with taut fascial pulls and hardening and tightening and a decrease in that pliability and a lot of pain inside of us that isn't seen in classic medical testing. Okay, so myofascial release, um, again in particular the John F. Barnes method of it, is very intuitive and right-brained. It's a very soft technique. It's soothing and deeply relaxing often to patients and clients, yet it's very scientific and evidence-based. Actually, there's evidence right now coming out just in, in droves that is actually proving the science underlying the success of the treatments that we've been seeing for years with it. So the actual technique itself, what it classically involves I'm just going to show a sideline release, a lateral release on Denny here, who's volunteered to be the patient. So, um, myofascial release is hands-on and it's skin on skin. So we typically have people in shorts or in a bathing suit, um, a tank top, sports bra, and it's done without any oils or any lotions. So the way that we work with it is the clinician, a trained clinician, assesses the body and finds the places of fascial restriction what's hot, what's hard, what's tender, what's snagging in and tugging in. And then the actual technique is first a real softening of the hands. It's a cross hand technique. 
in its most um, simple structural format. This is my fascia release. So it's a softening where you allow both hands, the clinician softens their own hands and lets it gently, applies a subtle pressure down into the tissue to feel the first tissue barrier and restriction. And then it's an outward pressure, very subtle, until you feel the next barrier. And then we wait and we hold. So what happens in the first probably minute or so of the release, what we feel giving way is the elastin and muscular component of the restriction. Once we hit 60 to 90 seconds, that's when the fascial restriction itself actually starts to give way. A classic myofascial release hold done through the Barnes method is three to five minutes long. So what happens, I'm just gonna hang out here and hold. And as we start to work with the release, what a patient or client will typically feel is a melting of the tissue, um, sort of like taffy, elongating and fluidly stretching. And part of what happens with the release, research now shows that the environment of our greater than 50 trillion cells in our body, the environment is the ground substance of the fascia. So when we talk about the fascia in its healthy state being fluid and viscous and pliable, the ground substance um, is what allows for that. It's the transport medium of the cells. So it's actually the ability allowing um, for the cells to allow the influx of oxygen and nutrients, uh, biochemicals, hormones, even medication, and the outflux of toxic waste. So myofascial release, when the, when the restrictions occur in the fascia, what's hap what happens is that ground substance hardens in and it gets adhered and gooey and um, glue-like and gummy and it decreases the ability of that cell to transport the good stuff in and the bad stuff out, basically. So as we work with the releasing of the fascial restrictions, it allows for the return of that ground substance that's housing all of our cells, for the return of that into more of a viscous fluid nature, which allows for cellular health. So what's happening, my hands do not slide on the skin. They're still applying a down and out pressure. Don't even know if you reach your right arm um, out on a diagonal, let it drop up. Yep, and your right leg back toward me even more. There you go. So it's just a sustained pressure and we keep waiting for the fascia to give. We won't do a full hold on the video because the full hold is five minutes. <laughs> um, but know that that's what we're seeking. And the, the Fascia Research Congress actually just, was just in March or April in Vancouver. And um, what they came out with is the actual evidence-based fact that a five minute hold enhances the production of interleukin-8 in our body, and that is our body's natural anti-inflammatory. So it's really, really cool stuff, and I think one of the most beautiful things about myofascial release is it is so respectful of the body and the body's wisdom, and it's gentle and it's soothing and it's calming, and yet it impacts our system at a profoundly deep cellular level to really work towards cellular health and healing um, and the decrease of that tug on all the pain-sensitive structures. So what we notice with myofascial release is that um, even though it's a very gentle technique, it's not uncommon to see the skin start to get red in between my hands and in the region that we're working. And that's actually a really good thing. What that is is um, that the region is warming up, it's heating up, and it's what's called a vasomotor response, where the blood flow is increasing significantly into the region, which is what we want. We want to bring more blood flow through, more oxygenation in, so that we can get more of the waste product out and continue to work with the, the releasing of the restrictions and the health of the cells. So something to be noted with myofascial release and something that differentiates it from a handful of different other techniques is that there is absolutely no white knuckling to be done on the part of the patient or client. So it is common to feel what's going on, to feel like, wow, that's a little bit different, to feel um, a melting of the tissue, to feel um, pressure. What we don't want is to ever see a client or a patient white knuckling their way, gritting their teeth to get through that moment because it means that it's too much on the system. So what I ask at the beginning of every session and, and remind even patients I've seen many times over is that at the moment they find themselves starting to white knuckle or grit their teeth, if you find yourself doing that or if I see you doing it, then um, I want you to immediately state halt, stop, ease up, and I take my hands off. 
this is about respecting the body and guiding the body through the body's wisdom to heal. It's not about coming in externally and imposing a release on the system.